everybody. Welcome back to another video in learning and technology. My name is Frank. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the things about Microsoft Whiteboard that I particularly like to use when communicating with students. It's a very rich product with a lot of features, and there are a few features that I find particularly useful in my classroom and remote teaching. Okay, so I want to give you 10 tips of using the Microsoft Whiteboard for when you're teaching. Things that I've found have been quite useful for me. And I've got 10 tips that I want to show you, but something tells me I'm going to end up giving you a few more than that. So there's three sections of the whiteboard that I want to focus on. The first is this bottom menu down here where I have pens, images, notes, insert menu, undo, and redo. Then, of course, if I click on the pen, this brings up a menu for pen functions. And if I go up to the top here, this is where I can work with settings. So I have a few tips for each of those areas. Let's start off with pens. So with the pens, I can choose multiple colors of pens. I have a, a little caddy here of different pens. If I click on a pen and tap it, I can choose the thickness of the pen. So I can choose to go for a medium, a uh, little bit uh, thinner. So if you want, you know, this level of text here, I can put that in. Um, I prefer myself to have a little bit of, of a thicker um, pen for when I'm doing drawings and stuff like that. Um, you know, all sorts of different things I can put there. And if I go here, I can also change the color of the pen. Now there are some fun pens in here. There's a, a glitter rainbow. There's a star trail pen. Uh, let's look at those. Now with these pens, I definitely go for a little bit of a thicker pen because the effect actually looks much nicer when you have a thicker pen. And if I go here, let's grab the Star Trail one. Don't even know that's what if that's what it's called, but you can see that there's a bit of a different color combination with these pens. They're kind of fun. Okay, and those those can add a little bit of variety. And you have a silver and a gold. I tend to be a little boring with my pens. I go for black, red, blue, green. I like orange and purple, but uh, you can change those as you need to. Uh, the other thing that I have here, so that's tip number one, changing the thickness and the color of the pen. Another cool thing that I can do is if I tap the eraser, so there's the eraser, if I give it a tap, you can clear the canvas and that clears the entire canvas instead of having to go and erase everything. That's tip number two, clearing the canvas by using the eraser and clearing the canvas. Tip number three is the ruler. So the ruler you can see here, if I click in the center here, you can see I'm at 86 degrees right now. If I put my mouse into the center and scroll the mouse, I can actually move that ruler to whatever angle I want. And then when I grab a pen, and if I grab the pen and go along that angle, you see that I now have moved to that angle. So you can use this if you're doing any type of drafting or more uh, mathematical drawings that require a little bit of precision there. This ruler can be very helpful. It's a neat little tool to have and then you just take it off. So that's the use of the ruler and it actually took me a little while with the ruler uh, to figure out that you have to click the center and then use your mouse wheel to spin it. So for, for a while there I didn't really know how to do that but figured it out. Thought I'd share that with you. The other thing that I can do here. So I'm just going to erase it. Now again, I can hit the eraser and erase what I don't like, or I can click the eraser and clear the canvas. Okay. So I'm going to go into the next menu here, and this is my main screen menu. Now by default, if I click on the canvas, I'll just move things around. Now I'll just draw an object on here um, just so that you can see that. Grab a pen. I'll just type hello. And if I go here, you'll see that when I'm on this menu here, I move the objects around. I'm not drawing at this point, so you can't draw. You have to go back to the pen to draw. But there are some really neat things I can do here. One thing I can do is I can add an image. So tip number four is add an image. You click on add an image, select an image from your computer. So it'll go to the default directory that you were in last. One of the things I do when I'm teaching is I make sure that I have a specific directory with all my images in it. And then what I'll do is go to there before class so that when I do add an image, I don't have to navigate along the side to different images. And that way I'm not exposing a whole bunch of my file system. So in my case, I just chose pictures, backgrounds, and I put all my images there. I go into that image and I can now have an image 
that I can take a pen and I can write and I can say this is the Wacom tablet that I'm using. This is a little bit of a bonus tip. I highly recommend having something where you have a stylus and a tablet. This is how I'm drawing and I created another video where I show you how you can use your iPad as the tablet or of course if you have a Surface Pro you could use that as your tablet as well. But the, the key there is I find it very well, not very difficult, but I find it challenging to write by using my, my mouse. So I prefer to have a stylus for style. That being said, now that I've shown you my handwriting, you're probably thinking I might be better off with a mouse. So if I go there, that's adding an image. Um, other things that I can do then is I can also add a note. And when I add the note, so this is tip number five, you can add a note that you can move around. And if I tap on that note, I can change the color of the note so I can have your traditional yellow sticky note and I can go in add another note on here tap it and go into the color make it a blue sticky note and you'll notice that this one fell behind the image I can drag it to the front of the image I can tap the image which brings the image to the front so depending what you want on the front or the back it's the last thing that you tap so you can go in there sometimes you'll have to minimize the image notice that the writing of my image actually stays with the image as well. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So tip number six, if I go in here, there's a, uh, a number of things that I can do uh, with uh, this menu here. So a lot of cool things. I can add text. I can paste something that I've got on my clipboard. I can create a note grid on there. I, want, I won't show them all to you, but the one I want to show you there is a Bing image. This can be very, very helpful. So if I go in, type something like penguin, I can't draw penguins. So if I go in there, one would argue that I can't draw much. But if I go in here, I can quickly grab this Bing image of a penguin. And this can add some really good visual uh, interest to my whiteboard here. I'm just going to tap these and hit delete to clean up a little bit. Um, one of the things I do all the time as well is move the board along to give myself more space. So here I've got my, my penguin and then I could, you know, go and make notes here and say this is the penguin's, you know, fish eating part and this is the penguin swimming in the ocean part and this is the walking on land part. Um, those are scientific terms. So if I go back, so Bing images can be extremely helpful, super useful and it's a great way if you don't have really good drawing skills that you can actually just grab Bing images and that can solve a lot of problems for you. That's tip number six. Tip number seven is you can put your face on there. So if I click hit camera, it'll actually go in and it'll use my webcam in order to, now I can talk to my students, I can show them the tablet that I'm using, I can show them the stylus that I'm using, and then that gives me the ability to sort of interject and start talking without having to switch applications. So the camera is tip number seven. Uh, another cool tip, so I'm just going to go ahead and clear the canvas. If you remember, a quick way to do that is to clear the canvas. I'll show you another way to clear the canvas. Let me just put something on there. So I'll put something on the canvas. Another way to clear the canvas, this is a bonus tip, is if you hit the menu, you can go clear canvas from there as well. That'll clear the canvas. So now I have a clear canvas. I want to bring up a PDF document. So if I grab the plus sign, I can go into PDF document. Once again, it defaults back to the last directory you were in. So I keep all of my uh, PDF documents. I would put them in a directory, navigate to it before class so that when I hit that add PDF, they would all be listed here. I'm going to go to a hiking plan that I prepared for this particular demo. And you can see I have a one page PDF document. I can insert that page. And now I have a PDF document that I can start marking up. I can start making notes on it. I can also go in with my mouse, use the wheel to scroll. You can see I'm at 100 and oh, notice with my mouse that it's giving me the, the line there. So I can, because I'm on pen mode, so I can undo those pen lines, go back to my drag mode and I can actually go in and I can use the center wheel of my mouse to scroll in, get a view of what I'm looking at. Now the quality of the PDF, of course, uh, the higher quality, the more you can zoom in. And when you're done with it, you can cut it or you can delete it and have another clear canvas. So tip number nine is bringing in PowerPoint. Same thing as before. If I go into PowerPoint, 
It'll navigate to the last directory that I went to for PowerPoint. So if I go here, I can bring in this fancy presentation that I created for this demo, and it will show me each of my slides as a separate uh, entity. So I can bring in a single slide, or if I want, I can insert all of the slides. And when I insert all the slides, I'm just gonna go back to, sorry, my drag mode, and I can go and move these slides around. I can go in, if I grab in between the slides, or a little bit above the slides, I can go in and I can see all of my slides in here. I'm a little bit zoomed in, so I can zoom out if I wanna see them all. So you can see all the different slides that I have. Select individual slides. I can go back to my pen mode. I can take notations on my slides. So I could say something like, you know, Bob, you're in charge of the network. And uh, I can grab an orange pen, make that pen a little bit thicker. And say, Sally, you're in charge of the satellites. And grab a blue pen and say, Bill, you're in charge of links. So I can, you know, I can play around, I can have a discussion around these slides and make notations on the diagrams that I have. So I've looked at the pen modes, I've looked at the insert menus, some of them, and then if I go into the settings, there are a couple of very useful settings. Notice that I have this one called ink to shape. Now if I go ink to shape, what that's going to allow me to do is if I draw any shape that's a close approximation of a known shape. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I go in and I draw a circle, it will make that a nice circle. If I draw a triangle, it'll clean that up and make it a triangle. If I draw a square, it'll make a nice square. And you can do that with different shapes that aren't necessarily, you know, the, the circle triangle and square, there's shapes that are known and it will recognize those shapes. So, it'll, well, that one didn't work so well, but it'll recognize a lot of different shapes as long as you've drawn a fairly close approximation to the shape. And uh, so some shapes are easier than others to draw a close approximation to. So again, this is uh, maybe a demo of my poor drawing skills more than anything else. But the idea is that it will fill in most shapes. It has a, a pretty good library of shapes. I'm just not very adept at drawing a lot of shapes using even the stylus. Um, the other thing you can do is underneath here, you can go in and you can post it out to a team. So if I go post to a team, it'll give me a list of the teams that I'm a member of. So if I go in here and I'll go to uh, Frank's Amazing Classroom, and I can put it into any of the channels in my classroom. So if I put it onto the general channel, it'll put a shared whiteboard there. I'll post that to that channel and it'll share with all of the members of that channel. It's now been posted. And if I go to that team, so I'll go over to that team, Frank's Amazing Classroom in the general, you can see that I've shared a couple of whiteboards there. So I've shared a whiteboard to that classroom. So that's a great way to get it into a classroom once you've dis, uh, finished a discussion around something. You can say, okay, let's put it into the appropriate channel for your class. And then you can do, a, there's a lot of things you can do. Now I'm starting to get into a whole bunch of bonus tips here. But one of the things that's nice to do is you can go in here and again, clear the canvas. So I'll clear the canvas. And if I go in here, I can go and do things like... Uh, format the background. So let's say I want to have a little bit of a pattern on my background and I want it to be, say, yellow. So you can create different types of backgrounds that are appropriate for your environment. And then maybe that's something where you want to go in. You want to do some drawings on here. All right, so you can oh, grab a pen, put some drawings on there, a 70 degree angle. And uh, that's a great way to add, again, a little bit more visual flair to your whiteboard. But wait, I have one more tip. So tip number 11 of 10. If you go in, if I have something copied to my clipboard, and I go in and I paste what's on my clipboard, let's say a URL, for example. Notice what happens. I happen to have found this really good video channel on YouTube. So I had the URL to share it, and I just right-clicked and pasted it into my document. And if I have something like a little notepad or something available, I can keep a little list of all the different cool videos that are out there. Just keep the URLs of all the different cool videos. I can go in and I can copy those, go to my whiteboard here, and I can just paste those right in. 
and now I've got a little bit of a whiteboard that has a number of different videos on it. What's really interesting about this is that if I actually click on that video, it'll launch YouTube and begin playing that video. In my case, I just have it on another screen, but it'll actually start the video. So there you go. So you can tell all your students about this wonderful YouTube channel. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you found some of those tips and tricks useful. Do you have any of your own that you'd like to put into the comments down below? Go ahead and do so. Or is there anything you want to see me demonstrate? I'll be happy to do that as well. Just put it down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching.